Hey guys, Dan here from VHX411. Today I have a Audi engine computer and I will show you how the clone process is done. Now, what I mean by cloning is grabbing the key information from the original. We have original here, which is bad, and a good donor one with the exact same part numbers. Always make sure you're working with the same part numbers. And we will be grabbing key, VIN number, all the coding information from the original one, programming them into a donor one. Now, this process will only work if the computer communicates. If there's a CAN connection, CAN communication, this will work. Otherwise, if it, there is no CAN communication, uh, then you got to open it up, read it on the BDM frame. Otherwise, if you can't even read that, then that's a whole different story. So let's start. As you can see, this is a Continental and the CMOS 8.3. I got a CMOS 8.3. I will be using the Hex Pro programmer for this. And we will be reading it via CAN line. And if you can see, I got my wires already set up that way. We're not killing any time making a long video just to hook up the wires. Now the wiring, I got my connection right here on the hex probe. When you go to hex probe, you set up the CMOS 8.3 and then we get a diagram. Once we got the diagram, we just set everything up. Now I also got my pinout connected because hex probe does not have the big connection which is the ground connection so as you can see connected according to the picture over there now let's power it up and we are going to read it now we will read one at a time so we will read p flash first we can just hit backup and read it all We'll do that a little bit later, but why I like to read the Volkswagen and Audi computers individually each EEPROM and each flash is because a lot of these computers, when you're trying to read and then when you write, even though the part numbers are the same, the car still won't start because the checksum doesn't match for whatever the reason. It's a very common thing on Audi, Volkswagen, even in their clusters when you do this the checksum won't match and the car still wouldn't start so reading p flash and we will read it save it and we'll do it with every flash and external eprom and then i'll just hit back up so i will have a complete file all those together now if you need this service done at the end of the video i will Put up a link or on the bottom of a description in the description box right there i'll have a link so you can have this service done if you need that otherwise if you do have a hashtag programmer this is how i'm doing with a hashtag programmer now we do need a separate breakout box so we can power up the ground because hashtag does not have enough wires to do that It is at 65%. I will fast forward through this. That way we're not just waiting on all the ECUs and all the D flash and P flash. So we got Audi, Siemens, CMOS. I'll just put Audi dash. This is the original. And obviously the description is P flash right here. And then I'll just go D flash and read it. Now, if you have an Audi or Volkswagen and it has a tuned file in it, 
this will also transfer the tune file from the original one to the good donor one. Uh, like I said, some of these, it might not work do, uh, doing through the can. If it has a check some issues and the car still does not start, the other option you will have to do is with the Breedus and only transfer the coding information, the VIN information and the key information. So that's the only other way to do it. So first way, just do it this way, it's 50-50, more like 60 to 40. And if that does not work, then we will, here, let me do original. And then I'll just do the external EEPROM. That's a separate video for uh, doing that. So I will make a video if you did try cloning the ECU and there is an issue with the checksum, then we can do it with a Breedus. Now you always have to save the original from a donor, all the files, because if you don't have that, even I can't help you. Takes a little longer, but Hextex is actually one of the quickest ones to read the flash file. So we'll save this as original. And then I'll just do the complete backup of everything. Now this will take a while, so I will fast forward through this. If you like what you see, like, hit that like button, subscribe and share. As you can see, it's doing P flash, D flash and E external EEPROM all at once. And I will say backup original. All right, now we're done. I'll disconnect it, unplug everything, and we're done reading this. So I'll just put read, okay. So read, okay we will get a donor now we will follow the instructions on this so i will get this one out of the way too many wires over here and we'll start with ground here so ground here we're gonna have two powers Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we will recheck everything because you do not want to fry anything. Now we got a yellow and an orange. So pin number five from the right, that's a three, four, five. And then right after that is the orange. And then it'll skip one. Or actually, it was supposed to skip two. So here's a four. Yellow, orange. Skip two. And then right about to the right. And we will always recount, always recheck. Cause we don't want any problems. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is it. And we'll just count it over here. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Now we got that. Let's just get my green and blue. That's fifth. So we'll just go one, two, three, four, five, because the other one is a bigger one. Right below it is the blue one. And now I will set my power and ground from my breakout box. 
because Hextech does not have a bigger ground. Only one wire that's big enough to fit in there. So we got everything connected according to the picture. Now we want to move all the wires the, from the case. That way it doesn't short out anything. Because power and ground can short out. All right, make sure I have a good computer connection. And I'll hit my power. And let's see if we have a good connection. So I'll just read the external EEPROM. It is the fastest to read, and that will determine if we have a good connection with the donor ECU. And of course, we will fast forward through all this. That way we're not just wasting and killing time because it is a huge file to read and write. Okay, good connection. So I will save this as E Audi. I'll just put it as a new. So EEPROM is red. Let's do a D flash. Normally you can do the backup and then just restore it, but I've had problems with the ECUs. If I just back it up and then just write it to the donor one. It will read everything and write everything, but then the checksum don't add up and you don't have individual D flash, B flash, and external EEPROM. And it's, even when you restored it, it's pretty hard to revert the checksum and it just does not work. So I always do it this way. It's safer in the long run if I do need to come back to it. All right, D flash is almost done. I'll hit, I'll hit new, and the long one is the P flash. Now, like I said, if you need the service at the end of the video, and if it's your first time, do subscribe. If you like what I'm showing you today, please hit that like button. If you like your Audi or Volkswagen, hit that like button. If you hate it, just write in the comment, why do you hate your Audi and Volkswagen or Volkswagen? Okay, I'll hit new. And then finally, I will completely back it up again. All right, almost done reading it completely. Complete backup is done. I will save backup. This is a new ECU. Now, what we're gonna do is restore, and then we'll hit backup, and this is the original backup. So from the original computer, we're writing complete File P flash D flash EXT or EX EEPROM external EEPROM. Now it could be quicker because it will compare the file, and if this thing hasn't been tuned, it's just gonna overwrite only in the location where the bin number, the keys are, the CS coding, and all that stuff. So once it links to this ECU, we will see if it's a quick write or not. So it's erasing and writing. So it's just erasing some of the stuff. Yep, it's much quicker. As you can see, boom. Writing external EEPROM. 
P flash, D flash is done. And there you go, it's completed. So we've written the information from the old one to the new one. Now, if you like what you've seen, hit that like button. Now hit that like button, like right now. And then share, subscribe. I will see you in the next video.